Okay, so today on The Real Real, uh, so we're going to be talking about the fourth installment in the uh, popular John Wick franchise. Um, this is actually, I think, probably the the tentpole, you know, action franchise in Hollywood right now. Because um, it's been, I think each movie has just been outdoing the, the, the last one in terms of revenue anyway. So um, with this one, we continue on sh directly from the last movie, Chapter 3. Um, which again, it's basically just been an, an ongoing story. Um, I, I I wanna I wanna kind of give a, a good like a fair introduction to this movie. But as I was saying before we started recording, I like look, thinking back to it, I really cannot uh, grasp exactly what the plot of the movie was. All I re all I can recollect is that obviously we follow Keanu Reeves as the, as the titular John Wick, who is um, like this supposed to be the uh, Baba Yaga or the Boogie, the Boogeyman. He's supposed to be like one of the um, most uh, prolific hitmen, you know, in the world. And, um, you know, I, over the course of the movies, we've kind of uncovered this cabal of, uh, you know, assassins that, and they're basically hidden under every nook and cranny. Like everywhere you go, there's an assassin. So um, it, I, I believe it was in the second movie. Oh, oh, they're hidden. They're hidden, yeah, they're hidden, they're hidden yeah. <laughs> Even though they're hidden in plain sight, more or less. So yeah, follow, following from chapter two, well, I mean, let's let's start from the beginning. So just a quick recap. So uh, John Wick uh, chapter one for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, basically, his um, his dog is killed, I believe. His puppy, who was given yep. to him by his yep, deceased, yep. his deceased wife, and um, after that, he basically goes on a rampage. And his uh, car stolen. Don't forget the car stolen. Yeah. Oh, oh no, that was in the second movie, though. I think. But I mean, obviously, yeah. that, that kind of was it. Was that in the no, first one as well? Movie. They the oh, okay. So that okay. So, yeah. it's, it's, so it, was a, it was a it was a basic combination of killing his dog and you know. Yeah. So he was basically out for blood. He was out for revenge, yeah. and and he, he pretty much took down a criminal, a whole criminal empire because they killed his dog and they uh, <laughs> they stole his car. Which hey, you know, it's, 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 it's a hell of a motivation. But yeah, it was it was an entertaining flick. Um, it was quite a kind of small scale in in you know the grand scheme of things compared to where it is now. So leading on to the second movie, um, he basically got to the point where he, um, I can't remember what the name of the, uh, the, the other assassin was, but he, um, he, he basically killed one of the, uh, the, the bosses of this organization in the hotel, which is supposed to basically be off limits. It's supposed to be like, you're, you're not supposed to kill anyone. Yes. It's near space. Yeah, someone yeah. Sat yeah. On the yeah. Someone that sat on the, the high table. Basically, at the high table. someone from the high table forced him to honor some agreement that he had, that he made in order to get out. So he had to kill someone. He did that, and then the guy betrayed him and tried to kill him anyway. So he killed him in a hotel. So he killed him in a hotel. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically yeah. much a summary of John Wick Two. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then much. at the end, he gets, he gets, does he get that when he gets ex excommunicated? Ex yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah. Ex excommunicado is basically where. Um, you're fired. Yeah, you're, you're, they basically put a massive bounty on your head. Um, I can't remember how much it is, but it's like in the millions and pretty much every single assassin on, on the face of the earth is going after him. And this is how, this has basically been the plot of the movie up until now, I guess. Um, it's just- Yeah, so the first, yeah, so the first, the, the, the third one was the, the first, I think that happened that he gets excommunicado at the end of the second one. And then the third one is basically about him evading Try. all of the assassinations yeah. well, and trying to get his freedom. Yeah. 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 This is it. Is the elder at the high table, um, and the, the elder that sits above the high table, yeah. and he offers him a deal, saying, "You kill um, the concierge of the New York Continental, and you'll get your your freedom." Freedom. He doesn't yeah. do that. He, he teams up with the hotel owner instead, and the table attack him, and then at the end. Um, the concierge betrays him, shoots him off the roof so that he can get his hotel back after. No, that's the hotel manager, not the concierge. Yeah, the, the manager. The manager, yeah. The guy, Ian McShane, whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, that's when he started off in, in John Wick 4 after he got shot off a roof 
Um, Lawrence Fishburne's <laughs> character, the king of the homeless people, um, took him away <laughs> and has been confined him in refuge ever since. And John Wick 4 opens up with him, which is a really great scene, by the way, of, uh, especially if you watch it in IMAX, him punching the wooden board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, that, was really that good. scene was a great scene. I'll tell you something. Keanu Reeves opened his mouth. <laughs> and said the corniest line in the corniest way possible. Man was like, yeah, it sounded like a Power Ranger line. Listen, 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 listen. Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves is allowed to do that, bro. He's got a cool voice. Leave him alone. No, no. Dude, there were people. Leave him alone, bro. Dude, just acting. We all talk loud, bro. It was so cool. Nah, man. I'm sorry, but Keanu, like, I love, like, Keanu Reeves is one of the most loved. He's one of the most lovable uh, actors, like in Hollywood, like hands <laughs> down, yeah. But his line delivery was abysmal. Like every every single line, there were people cackling in the cinema. Like in the audience I was with, like oh, and this is it's not intentional, but like we just couldn't help it. It just it just doesn't come out right. Like it just doesn't really yeah. sell the the, the, the scene. Well, I wasn't so. I wasn't sure if I, I wasn't sure if they were trying to make his character like just really socially awkward because obviously he didn't, he didn't really have that much lines in the movie anyway it's not very few words isn't he the character so i wasn't yeah, sure if you were trying to make him it's perhaps like if you see him as a person he's just yeah. like that that's the way right, he right. talks and stuff is, is exactly like john wick talks so that's why it seems a bit awkward but he's just so he's, that being person. Yeah. He's, he's being himself yeah. <laughs> yeah, i don't think he's being himself i think he's trying to sound like a bad he's trying to sound like clint eastwood like he's trying to be like that that tough like Stoic, yeah. like badass kind of yeah. uh, action. I well, suppose he's trying to he's trying to live up to his own hype. Yeah, that like, yeah. like, yeah. for a minute. So. But he sounds like an a, he sounds like an AI robot. I think that's a great summary of this movie. I think it's trying to live up and outdo its own hype. Yeah, and I exactly. think my issue with it because it falls flat in certain places because it seems like it's trying to outdo itself. And but we can get into more detail yeah. later. Um, but I can go on with the suspense synopsis if you want. But that 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 big I think that's, yeah. that's more or less that's more or less so, isn't it? No, like, I mean, more is, uh, one more thing with the synopsis, well, like I think I, f- I feel like um so basically his motivation is basically getting his freedom, and I feel like yeah. that's a really powerful theme, and like that's a great mo- motivation and a great kind of introduction to this movie. Um, but what yeah, where it falls flat. I was going to say, just a key difference, obviously, yeah. in 3, he tried to get his freedom by making a deal with the Continental. Now in 4, he's trying to get his freedom by basically killing, killing everyone. everyone on the high table. Oh, it's cause he, because the deal fell through, so that, that's no longer an option. So now this time, it's just about he's going to kill everyone to get his freedom is his driving force in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's a good point that you brought up because I feel like this film really lacks really lacks like the nuance. Like you were um, we'll, we'll obviously we'll get into this, but um, it, it doesn't you don't you don't really um, absorb the story. Like it just feels like one every scene is an excuse for the next to get to the next scene. Um, yeah, and there's no there's no real sense of like em, like emotion or sense of um, like that's what that, that's what we pay for, bro. <laughs> you, are right. drama, or like... you are right. However, I feel like action action movies. I give a pass. I don't expect a narrative narrative masterpiece. And mm. all I expect is a coherent plot. It doesn't even have to be a great plot. It just needs to make sense. And this movie, like people saying, is just every scene is an excuse to get to the next action scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the the writers basically they knew who they had. They had Donnie Yen, Keanu Reeves. Hirinada uh, Sonata and Hiroyuki Sonata and all they had was and Squarkins in a fat suit and they just basically said these are the scenes we need and we need to basically put in filler scenes in between them to justify it as a vehicle yeah. to get to the next scene so yeah we need we need um um we need Donnie Yen to fight a bunch of men then we need Donnie Yen to fight Hiroyuki Sonata with swords. Then we need Hiro- um, Donnie Yen to fight Keanu Reeves. Then we need Keanu Reeves to fight Scott Atkin. Then we need Scott, Donnie, Donnie Yen, Keanu mm. Reeves to, uh, to fight a bunch of men together. And then we need them to fight each other at the end. Like it was- Just make it happen. Yeah, it was just, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel like, and I haven't watched the other John Wicks in a while. I don't remember the plot being incoherent in terms yeah. of- like, well, it wasn't a great plot, but the plot just made sense. What John Wick was doing and the motiva- his motivation behind each of his actions 
it made sense. Yeah. Then it wasn't a great plot, but it was like, <laughs> everything he was doing made sense. Yeah, because this movie, it starts off weird. Movie. Why was he in Japan? Nothing is explained about that at all. So I think he was just hiding out. Back to the Roaches. After, the after, 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 <laughs> no, but after that, after the, after the scene where he's punching the ball, he kills the elder above the high table, which, again, in the third movie, Matt, it was life and death to get there. Mm. He easily mm. got there. I'll fly past that. And then he had the guy had three guards, and the guards were running away from him. What kind of guards are they? <laughs> and anyway, after that, he kills the El high, elder high table. So obviously, that means the high table are going to respond. So he goes to Japan. But the but there's no explanation as to why. It looks like he just went there for a glass of scotch because <laughs> he literally went there and told him he's supposed to one of his best friends. And then his best friend literally gave up his life, his livelihood, his daughter's life, his daughter's <laughs> livelihood, and the livelihood of and the lives of all of his men for John Wick. There's no there's no amount of like logic you can pull out of your ear. Like all they have to do is create some sort of dude that, that the guy had that he needed to get for whatever reason. But they didn't even do that. They just bought him there because we needed to get, get Hiroyuki Sonata into the scene and we needed to get Donnie Yen to fight him. So John Nick needed to be there. It was just, yeah, it was, it, and it's, it's quite foundational. Yeah. This, this, board, so this, that's why it's not this movie, this movie is not one you need to think about in terms of plot. Nah. You just, you're, you're, you're not meant to think. There, there's meant to be zero processing time mm. for any of the story in the film. You're literally just to sit down and watch the action sequences and the floor, bruv. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think if, you're, not, I think if you're looking for all currency, you're not gonna find any, bruv. That, like, <laughs> that's the thing. You you have to you have to like uh, pick and choose, really, because obviously, as as you were saying, Ruben, as Ruben said, mm. this this is not a movie. This is not a film where they like spent time uh, putting effort into the, the plot, the story. You can you can honestly see that all the effort. Yeah, very t- very two dimensional. Yeah, very two dimensional. All, all the planning goes into the the, the the martial arts, the camera work, the uh, choreography. Basically, just the kinetic, like the action, all all of that. That's that's yeah. the spectacle of the movie. That's like the part. Think of, of it. Think, think think of it this way as well. In these in these, in, in a, expect there to be twists and turns to the plot, and you expect there to be character development. There's none of that in this film. There's no character development, and there's no twists and turns to the plot. The initial plot at the beginning of what you said, Law, he's out to basically kill everyone to get his freedom. That's it. There's no twists and turns involved in how he gets from A to B at the end. So, I'm not yeah. asking for twist and turns. I'm not asking for a complicated plot twist. I'm not even asking for character development. I just wanted your plot to make sense. <laughs> and the other three movies, their plot made sense. I yeah. mean, I'm giving this a very low bar. I give action movies generally a very low bar they have to cross. And the fact that they were lazy, too lazy to even do that, I think is a problem. Mm. I don't think you could just use the excuse, this is an action movie, so we don't need to try and make a coherent plot. Like the other three movies had a coherent plot. They were very two dimensional. They weren't great, but they made sense. And they, ha- mm. I don't think I do- it's justifiable to just say, because it's an action movie and the action's good. And I could talk about some of those action scenes as well. We'll get into that later. That you could just bypass them. We don't have to do any sort of coherent plot. I mean, so did that justify Gunwick's actions? That's all you have to do. So did that? Did, did that? Did that, did that? That's all. Did that? Did that pull you out of the movie at like multiple it points? Oh, okay. Really? It's so really? ridiculous. Really? Yeah, it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, just. You said so. I just want to say like a little. It's this is like a little thing, but you said there's no twists and turns yet. I mean, the ending does kind of have a mini twist if you think about it, like. You oh, see the, oh, the shootout? Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, that was like good, a little... Oh my God. Do you want to talk about that? No. Do you want to talk about that? No. <laughs> should, I mean, we, should we leave that? Should we leave that? It, we yeah, we'll leave, we'll leave it. We'll leave it till later. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it till later. But I, I wanted to get into, like, obviously, we, we've kind of got the elephant out of the room. Like, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, this is where the, the film falls short. But because I, I still think it's a great movie. I'll just say it. I still think it's a good movie. I still really liked Ooh. it and enjoyed it. I mean, it's a very great Terminator movie. Uh, Terminator? Yeah. I, I mean, mean I, I, I just got shot at and 
But then, um, I think I think there's a bit more parts to one it. Of things, one of the things I will point out is my man clearly has like mad amounts of plot armor, right? Because the amount of the amount of battery he took in that film, or did not take in that film, that that, that other characters took was just that, that was the thing that pulled me out of the film. Not the Ruben, story. My Ruben. My Ruben. 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 That's been the same throughout all of them. Yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say. Me. Like Ruben, like why are you bringing logic? Why are you bringing logic into this franchise? No, no, but come on, from, from the fact that my man is getting hit by cars and just getting up and walking away, where the other characters are getting hit by Ruben. and they're down on the ground, bro. Ruben. Like, Ruben. Ruben. I don't know what you're about that. I'm just like, in the suit, explain the suit. How is this suit taking bullets and then just walking off, but you punch him in the suit and he feels it? Ru- Guys, they, they established this. This film does not happen in the real world. Like, this, this is a cartoon. This is like a, a game. This is a video game. Like... These yeah, guys, characters do not operate I, the way that I, many people do. I know, I know, but I would at least expect to have a character like that come out with some scrapes and scratches, you know. Come on. No, like, it's not, other it's characters not, are getting taken out by, like... It's not that kind of movie. It's not that kind of movie. you got, you got to leave... you got to... Because all the other John Wick's movies, he was involved, it was Invincible as well. Yeah, exactly. And then the Mario star invincibility setting or whatever. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And that's consistent, so I'm, I, I, that's why I didn't bring that up, because... Yeah. And the other John, so I don't, I'm not going to complain yeah. about that because John Wick 3, he was invincible, John Wick 2, he was invincible, and you know, it's all in the game. Yeah. They're ramping up the invincibility by levels and levels, because... Yeah, he's definitely, he's immune. Invincibility, like, yeah, like, he's got bad balls in the three, bro. And I'm going to say, I give the action with a lot of great thing. That's why I'm not complaining about that. Like, because obviously it's inconsistent, but like, I'm not going to complain about that. Mm. I just wanted a coherent plot, that's what I wanted. And I thought, <laughs> like, I don't care about your magic suit and the fact that you can literally run through like so many guys and all that. But like, uh, it's you know, just oh, make it make sense. That's all. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I I really found that um, you know this film had some interesting characters. Like um, I wanted to get into like you know, for example, Scott Atkin. For example, like I was actually really impressed by his performance because. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but every other Scott Atkin movie I've seen, his acting has been atrocious, like worse than Keanu Reeves. Man, but he stepped up. I was, like, I was questioning. Yeah. I was questioning myself. I was like, is that Scott Atkin? Yeah, that, I me like, too. I was like, when the hell did he do that? When did he get this range? Like, when, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, he's usually bug number three or whatever. Like, and he's got his brother's a proper role with like lines and like. Of lines Literally, yeah, and yeah. obviously, we know he can fight. I'm fine, yeah, yeah. He must. No, I, um, I think it's what happens that a lot of, um, I think, acting chops to us. If you, if you, there's a movie I'd recommend with him called Avengement. It's a stupid name for a movie, but it's a really good <laughs> film about him in prison and stuff. But it shows that he, when, when he can actually, you know, feel passionate about a project and stuff, where he can actually have some lines and stuff, he can actually pull it off. And mm. yeah, I'm glad he showed it because I really want him to do better in like Hollywood and yeah, more people recognize him I for could, what he can do. I could really see him being the kingpin on the ball or something like um He yeah. pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No he did. He put he, he, he came yeah, across yeah. like that kind of um almost animated like penguin penguin like character. Like yeah, yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah. You know what I mean yeah. and he's done, he, style, he yeah. was he was convincing and he made the team along with the music in that scene where they're in the club with the card game and stuff. Along with the music, which I thought was very powerful in that scene as well, like he made it like that much more intense. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that was a big, a big standout point of the film for me, which kind of pulled it away from the rest of it. it stood out. Done it, done a great job. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. And um, yeah, we... I can tell though, they're having fun with them. Like I think he mentioned that he wanted to be more like a Samo Hung kind of character, like a fat guy just who's who can do like really good martial arts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, you can see like if if you've seen any of like Samuel's films and stuff, like the way he moves and stuff, um, it was it was like a homage to that. So like a lot of these films is homages to like famous martial arts films that have come before, or like famous gun fu films that have come through before. Yeah. I mean, my only problem with the like the scene was that he ran a mission. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. He ran, and then and then like halfway like, right, right. right from escaping, you find that actually, hang on a minute, my man can hold his own. Why did you leave? Why did you leave all your men back there, which gives you an advantage? I ran away, man. Like, the fight on your own, okay? You're asking. Yeah. 
he had some plot armor as well. He got shot. He got shot in the ass, and he got stabbed as well, brother. He was doing all kind of movements like, <laughs> after that happened. So uh, <laughs> it was funny. It made it, it made it for yeah, funny, funny little chase. <laughs> Uh, so just going back to where you can get a bit of um, like going through the synopsis of the plot, just so we know where we are. So yeah, obviously they go. Um, Keanu Reeves goes to the he's Continental. The the high table attack it. Chill here, you uh, the um, the the manager of the hotel, which is Hiroyuki Sonada's character. The daughter gets shot. Then demands that Keanu Reeves gets revenge on Donnie Yen, who killed her father. Um, and that is when. Um, John, that's when he returns to New York and Winston tells him that he can make a deal with the high table to have a have a, a duel um, in order to get his freedom. But in order to do that, he has to be part of one of the families in that are part of the table. But because he and John were two, I think it was, he broke his ties with his family. He had to it. Which is why John went free then. Um, then he has to go back to um he has to go to the german that killed his adoptive father in order for the daughter to take him back into the family so that's why he was there um fighting scott atkins in a fat suit um yeah, anyone i mean there, there were a few oh, other characters oh. there, there were a few other character performances that i enjoyed like there was um yeah. This guy called Tracker. I don't know if you guys know him, but the guy with the dog. The black dude, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he he had a kind of like um, adversary slash um, like a sidekick. Not really a sidekick, but um, he he was basically assist. He was assisting John Wick uh, whilst like you know going after him as well. So I like that kind of relationship. Yeah, he was assisting to gain his bid. He was, he was, he, he was, he was very plot divisive. He was a very plot divisive character, bro. I'm not sure like why he was there. For me, it seemed like he was really for one for for, for, for really one key scene. That was always good, and that's the scene where John decides to save his dog. That was the only scene which which which, which kind of made me feel okay. This is why they put him in the film. Everything else kind of just made me feel like the movie could have done. The movie could have survived without his character, like easily. Absolutely agree. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. He was a best advice. I I don't think he was a character at all. I think he was literally in there because I think a, a lot of people like the dog scenes in John Wick Three, so they needed to find a way to put a dog in there. <laughs> yeah. That's why, um, because obviously he's literally there. He was supposed to get killed. Yeah. He was about to get killed, or could he could have killed John with himself? He lets him go because he wants more money. Which, I mean, it's just a bit ridiculous. I mean, this guy's been unkillable for four movies now. Like the fact that you would give up the chance to kill him to get an extra few million, I think is absurd. Yeah. <laughs> like, was, was, so was so was he tracking John Wick for money? Was that why he was yeah. there in Japan? He yeah. was tracking him, yeah. getting paid to track yeah. him. Yes. And that no, was... no, at that point, he wasn't getting paid to track him. He just he, John Wick is a bounty on his head. However, every time he survives, the bounty keeps going up, and he wanted the the bounty to go up to a ridiculous figure. And my man was just so my man. My man was just heading bets. He was just heading bets, waiting for. Uh... Yeah, that's why he's saving John <laughs> that Wick. So his bounty goes up to a certain amount. But the movie never says why he yeah. his money. He's greedy. But yeah, we talk. Real talk, real talk, it would have been it would have been very simple to just like give his character a little bit more relevant and just say, oh, he needs the money for like daughter surgery or he needs the money for like, you know, something which is, you don't need to go too deep into it. Exactly. He's in the movie so much. He's one of the characters. And it's just any time he pops into the scene, it's literally, hey, John. Survive, I'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like in John Wick 3 when the, the martial arts guys who were fans of John Wick were kicking the crap out of John Wick and could have killed him, but they kept letting him get back up. It was like, well, no wonder he's unkillable. Even when they catch him, they let him get back up. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I think some of these some of these things you need to kind of fill in the blanks or like I know with John Wick I think they rely a lot on that where they want you to kind of fill in the blanks and like 
perceive it in your own way. For instance, in that way, in that one you're talking about where they kept laying him back up, I perceived that as they just really enjoyed the fight of it, yeah. and they really enjoyed that moment that they just kept yeah, get back up, let's keep going, let's mm. let's rumble, they, let's have fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how I perceive that. So yeah, yeah, little bits and bits. It can seem stupid, but if you feel it yourself, I guess. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> I agree. That's, that is the head cannon I came up with. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, get, don't get me wrong. I didn't. I wasn't. Again, I wasn't pulled out of the movie by um that by that black dude being in the cast. Like it was just something that I just mulled over. It just obviously things happen so fast in the film. There isn't a reason to stop and think about things. So as plot divisive as he was, he didn't ruin the film for me. But it was just a thing like, oh, I thought they would. I thought they would uh, reveal a bit more. About why he's here risking his life for all this stuff a bit later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's very clear that obviously John Wick is the main character and everyone yeah. involves around him. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just so in your face that it's hard to ignore. That's one thing, thing, one thing, one thing I will say, one scene that I did quite like in being was that that oh, Mr. Mr. Unknown was name how he described himself. I'm what he was called. Mr. Nobody, yeah, but one, yeah, one scene I quite like. It was the scene just before John Wick saved his dog. Uh, it was the shootout in that house they were in, and then the camera pans to like, oh, it goes from like being a uh, uh, the old, over pan head. That was quite yeah, cool. Was that, that was, that was, that was, was like one of the that best scenes. That whole yeah. sequence, I think, was a freaking masterpiece because that's something yeah. I've never seen done so well in the movie before. Yeah, where they right. just have fun with like doing something new in a film for an action sequence so yeah that being particular, yeah absolutely i'm glad you gave that shout out because it stood out for me in that whole film that sequence itself yeah it was amazing yeah. man yeah so good and again it, 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 it just felt like yeah that was, was yeah that was it yeah you, dragon's you, breath i think it was called dragon's <laughs> breath <laughs> that was insane you could tell that i love video game and I think yeah, you could actually, yeah. I think you could actually see what was happening in like different rooms, like where they were. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. So that was you, that, that was pretty cool to see. And then obviously at, at the end when they, it goes back to being, you can see that they're just around the corner from each other. That, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Nice street. So, so yeah. So after he um, gets back into his family, he um, then John um, uses um, the Winston guy to deliver the challenge and then they agree terms on what the challenge will be and there's some sort of like game whoever draws the highest card will get um basically decide the the terms of the challenge so the challenge is with pistols at a certain place at sunrise um some somewhere in france and obviously the guy the main enemy bill scargard scargard's uh, character is obviously not going to face the duel himself so he puts up game so he puts the blind guy he puts the blind guy to in a duel with pistols, I mean, I, I can't let that one go, but... Yeah. Uh, he, had, he had the choice to choose swords, fam. Like, wait, wait, did, did, wait, did, did he choose swords? He did choose swords, didn't he, initially? And John Wick chose pistols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh... Yeah, you're gonna, my blind friend, you're gonna... Duel with pistols. I think. I think. I think. I think the reason. I think the reason. I think the reason he gave for why um, uh, is it Cage? Why Cage's character would have been motivated when the reason he gave, I thought was very good. No, no, wait, wait. I, I actually thought. I actually thought. No, no, no. no wait, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I actually thought the reason was good. The reason essentially being he's got things to live for and John Wick doesn't. But the fact that it's, it's still South Sudan, the fact the fact he chose the blind guy just falls out of what makes it makes it stupid and dumb. That's, that's, that's what, what yeah. I think I mean if it would have been swords. If it would have been swords, then fair yeah, play, yeah. I would have said fair enough. Well, the it's, thing is guys Guys, if I can interject, so the reason, I mean, for me, it does, I mean, it's stupid, I won't lie, it is still stupid, but I can kind of forgive it because of the fact that it's not like you can dodge or anything. It's actually more or less about, because he's probably done loads of shootouts when he was still, because um, because he had to, he took out his own eyes or something. Before that, I'm sure he's been in plenty of duels and stuff. So I think he can aim and stuff. The fact that it's in a straight line, all he has to do is shoot in a straight line. So it's all about... Who can draw the fastest? That's for the main thing about it. For me, for me, the fact he was blind didn't make that convincing. I get what you're saying, and I did think yeah. about that, but it just wasn't convincing. I think it, I think it would be better if they just put some device on John Wick, like a sound device, that so he knew at least where to shoot. I think that would have done it for me. 
Like, because obviously yeah. he, was using, he was using technology, like sound technology, to help him in some of the fight sequences early on in the movie. I thought they should have went with that rather than yeah. just having, you know, like, I can shoot perfectly and just hit. Like, anyone, however many meters away. Like, I thought that was a bit. A bit over the top for. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it was okay. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get what you're saying. He's meant, he's, meant, he's meant to be such a skilled assassin in his own right that yeah. he can literally, if if he's if he if he knows he's standing directly in front of someone, he can literally yeah, pull out a gun and shoot and shoot near enough perfectly yeah. straight. Fair enough. All he has to do is shoot straight. That's it. Yeah. Just shoot in front of him uh, and just trust him until it goes there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! Yeah, <laughs> but I did, I did really like the fact that he did use sound devices in early on in the movie to help him oh, yeah, figure out where to shoot. For me, although it wasn't like the perfect excuse, but it, that yeah, that was something that I think was well used to make sense as to how he's managing to shoot and predict where people are based on the alarms going. But I thought that was pretty. Pretty well used. So obviously, yeah. the rest of the character yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're going to use it again. So, before we uh, continue with the um, some of the, the final act, I was going to mention some of the action. Uh, and this does include the final act as well, to be fair. Um, some of the action scenes, um, I thought, looked quite silly and ridiculous. Like, it, it reminded me of, like, old-school action movies where... I remember in the Continental, like, when the guys in the armour, like, the, the actual full-on armour and the MC hammer pants, um, the really baggy shorts, when they were getting shot, obviously, because it's fully bulletproof, it doesn't kill them, it just, like, staggers them for a bit. Um, but it just looked silly when he was fighting. In certain occasions, when he was fighting multiple enemies, you would see that like, one of the guys in the back just driving around. Like, yeah. 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 I think. Yeah. I think. I think. I think. I think. I think. Like they explain it is that when they get shot in the head, although it, it's, it, it's not fatal, they are supposed they are supposed to be d- disorientated. But I think it's because it, there's so much bullets flying and it happens so frequently that you're like, man, in real life, this guy would have just got shot and that would have been that. <laughs> um, and I think, I think, I think what adds to that is there's a lot of, there's a lot, I, as much as I, I really loved like the fight sequences when it actually did flow and show the close-ups and whatnot, but there were a lot of sequences where people would go into engage without their guns, get their ass with and then pull out a pistol later. And it's just like, bruv, You've got a gun, like Holston, just use it. There's like multiple of you surrounding him, just shoot. Not that I would have killed him anyway, because he's bulletproof, mm. but at least make it make it look like you're trying. Like, <laughs> oh, God. Again, I think you guys are, are trying to apply too much logic to this, to this uh, well, that, action. I think exactly guys... that, because, I, I mean, going to this film, throughout the whole film, that kind of stuff would b- bug me usually. Yeah. But as I said, I was taking my mind off all that stuff because yeah, I know where it's your, supposed to be. Switch your brain off. It didn't make me upset. Yeah, it didn't make me upset, but it just made it funny. And the thing is, because yeah. when things like that happen like once or twice, it's like fine. But when it's repeatedly happening every scene, it gets a bit like you know, you get a bit. Old, it gets. It takes over a bit. You start to yeah. yeah. Uh, so see, when action is meant to be action, is the reason is the justification for all the other. Yeah. It's supposed to distract you. Action falls down as well. Then I think it's fair, fair game to criticize because that is the act. That we're yeah. talking about the action sequence is there, and the fact that the choreography relies on a guy writhing around on a yeah. drum right behind John Wick while John Wick's on the floor trying to deal with another guy. Yeah. That looks stupid. Like, and I don't yeah. remember that happening in the other. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. I think it was more obvious in this one because yeah, 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 it, right. it, it, it was more obvious. He was he was using like uh, some some of the choreography did look efficient, but there were certain times when it looked like being flashy and wasting his time on taking down some enemies. And like he said, when that's happening, there's two or three people in the background kind of thinking, man, should I go forward? Oh, should I wait? Like, it's like well, <laughs> you have multiple attackers. You have the advantage. Just go and kill him. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think the unfortunate thing is because some of these shots are like really expensive to make and stuff, and they uh, sometimes they may only have the one take to do. So yeah, sometimes they'll be like, oh no, it looks kind of weird, yeah. there, but we kind of keep it. Yeah, <laughs> so that's why we saw more of that in this one. Another thing which stood out for me was was the scene where um, he was. I think I think it was in that same comp where um, he was um, fighting Cage. It might have been later on actually. One of the two. Kane, by the way, like, Kane. Uh, oh, Kane, sorry, yeah, Kane. Yeah. Um, and um, John Wick's like hiding behind like this like glass panel or wall or something. And Kane's, oh, yeah. like, Kane's like right there. And I think he, say, he, he says something like, are you alive? Or he says something to him. 
And Are then, dead, yeah, and Jim Rick replies to him, and Kane still can't figure out where he is, and it's like, bro, you're meant to be the equalization guy. You can hear stuff pin drop a mile away. My man's hiding right in front of you to the left. You couldn't hear, you couldn't figure out where he was. Like, <laughs> he's probably replying to you. Yeah. I thought that was pretty silly as well. Like, it's, it's well. inconsistency yeah. with characters, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just con- conveniently, yeah. conveniently yeah. went super silent. Yeah. 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 Um, one little thing which again I thought was a bit silly but I understand why it was in the movie is I think in the previous movie I think people complained like for the guys in wearing suit why don't they ever shoot him in the head like why don't they ever go for headshots because obviously his head's not protected so, it, so, <laughs> yeah, so in order to counter out that criticism what they did was have them raise their blazer like this and everyone was doing that to protect their face and it just looked silly like when they're just going like that and going and it just it looks silly, like yeah, it looks a bit silly out I think I, I think I think for the people that John Wick was shooting, silly as it looked, maybe, but for John Wick's character, he was surrounded. So unless they're gonna pull up the whole suit over you, you would have got popped from any direction. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Oh man. Was that I, I, I went and legitly thought that was cool the way they did yeah, the thing. That's I, my personal yeah. thing. Yeah. I actually thought it was kinda of cool. I, I, I liked it. Liked it, 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 it makes sense. It did look it did it did look cool, but again yeah. I think it was just something that was all, it was it was overused and it became the yeah. normal standard of the yeah. film. Um just a quick question. Just just a quick question. At some point in the movie did John did John shake his suit and all the bullets fell out or something? Did that happen? Or oh what? yeah, when he took right at the end when he took off his um, yeah. 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 Deal, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. I wasn't sure if I had a thing, but yeah. Up. <laughs> Which also brings up another interesting thing that I I know we're gonna talk about his suit again. I assumed the whole suit was bulletproof. Apparently the shirt's not bulletproof. Yeah. So you got this middle section of their face, <laughs> and these men were firing at close range against each other, and no one ever thought to shoot at the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got on as well, that's why. Again, <laughs> the waistcoat don't cover the skirt. Maybe the tie's bulletproof as well. The tie. <laughs> <It's a> tie <laughs> <don't cover>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, 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 look! You're being silly. Look, you're, you're being silly. Obviously. Obviously, he was shifting his center for every single bullet to, you know, compensate. <laughs> you know, he, was, he was shifting it for you, you know, obviously. Um, because I, because I, when they were getting to the door, I was like, how is this going to work? Because he's wearing a bulletproof suit. Like, is he going to change or something? And then when I saw him take off the jacket and the waistcoat, and they were yeah. like, oh, they're saying the shirt's not bulletproof. I was like, what's happening? In all them times, this shirt's not been bulletproof. Yeah. It's not even the yeah, we can. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, call God, not bro. Not to mention as well that he would have had so many bruises from all the times he, like, even though. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, ignoring that, ignoring all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so how did you? I wanted. I wanted to ask how. So I'll go and grab something. No, I was, well, I mean, I'll let you finish because I was going to move on to a different topic. Oh, I was going to just finish off the final scene in terms of they had the duel and the little twist that you talked about at the end where he yeah. doesn't fire his third shot um, so that that guy, he hopes, will want to finish off John Wick. So he jumps into the duel to take the last shot and then John Wick shoots him in the head. Um, that's the could have failed in the ways. Like, it was so He could have been shot and died for stars yeah. in any of those. Do you think Johnny Yen was in on that plan? No. He wasn't. I thought he was in on it. No, I think no, he was in no, on it. Because he, 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 he deliberately no, missed the no, shot. I think like, uh, I don't know, maybe not. I think Because it's stupid either way. If he's in on it, then you're telling me a blind man was able to fire a gun from 30 meters away and make sure no one uh, John, John, John <laughs> Wick. John Wick, well, well, we can, we can, we can discuss him here, here as well. But yeah, John Wick was, um, just ridiculously lucky and making big gambles in that, in that scene. He got off completely. Yeah, he got so lucky that he didn't get clipped. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was it was it was a nice little fun twist, but again, it was all they were, it was all dependent on the antagonist basically being a cocky arsehole, uh, and you know. It also depended on um, the hotel manager to interrupt him as well. <laughs> he's like, he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's just oh, about to shoot and then he oh, just interrupted it one of the funniest scenes in the movie for me bro was when Donnie Yen was just like fuck off the whole movie the, uh, K- Kane is just this laid back funny like just the char- you know charming funny character and it's like yeah. the one scene where he just gets pissed like just fuck off like, <laughs> Yo, did, did you get did you get the feeling I had me briefing bro did you get that a feeling like, that Kane, Kane was a bit of an asshole? Because like, there there was there was times where he's like he's he can clearly like you know take someone out like efficiently, you know? but he's just he's just doing this extra bullshit like um, <laughs> just to, just to style him though. like you know you know, you know like the flurry of punches and I was like bro just just yeah. just finish him man come on he, he's just he's nah, just he showing sure off that he's famous like, Donnie Yen flurry punch man <laughs> he's just showing yeah. off like there was really Donnie Yen is a good cat. Good actor yeah. in his own right. I was I was trying to make comparisons between him and Jackie Chang in the movie, but he's just his own character. Like, I couldn't compare the yeah, two. No, and um, yeah. when, when he when he comes on scene at the at the Japanese, they're like noodles, ones like fighting, and the guy's like, "Bro, do your job." That just had me creeping, man. His his character was just like so well. It's like a com- yeah. it was it, it, he's a comedic character, right? He's not a serious. Really serious yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, he's Kane. definitely comedic. Yeah. Half enough. Yeah. Yeah, half enough. He has, he's yeah. very charismatic. Yeah, he was kind of a bit of a mixed bag, yeah. He was, mm. Sometimes he was, like, joking around, and then other times, yeah. obviously, he was trying to save his daughter from the table. Yeah. Um, so it was a bit serious, but... Um, he yeah, definitely loved... Well, he, he just... When, when he was... Any time he was on screen, I know he's meant to be, like, the other assassin, the other, basically, top assassin, but any time he was on screen, it just felt like it lightened the mood and the feeling of any, anything he was... Uh, so he, he, had, he, had, he, had, he had quite a he, he added his own presence to every scene he was in. Mm. Is what I'm trying to yeah. say. Which I thought was pretty. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if anyone else thought this, but I thought like all of the characters in this movie are dickheads, bro. Like they're not likable. Like I I liked John Wick's character in the other movies, but in this movie, he's a prick. Donnie Yen's a prick. I mean. Like Tyrion Kusanada, he's an asshole for like literally fucking his daughter over. Like, and for, for John Wick saying like, it was like I didn't, think, like, I didn't think he was an asshole for that. I thought he was, he was, you know, overcompensating on being the on the honourable, you know, overcompensating on being no, no, the no, honourable. He's lost his home and all his money. <laughs> His daughter, like, his daughter was literally before that scene was worried about that happening. Literally just saying, "Yo, did you hear what happened in New York?" They come to your bro. I'm trying. Like, she's saying it's too. Nah, I, 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 I dig what you're saying, but I do quite like that he was just the overly noble. He was the overly noble, like, like character. Like, you know, he was. He had John's back. It's so noble that he's. Unless, unless, unless. unless Unless, no, you would have, you would have, uh, you would have him just throw John under the bus, like. Yeah, I would have said, John, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing here, bro? Don't <laughs> <laughs> come fuck up mine. I thought you were right. I thought you were right. Why are you even here? You didn't hear anything. That was the annoying thing. You didn't oh, hear he anything. Came. He came to the two bros. He came. He came. He came. He came. He came. He came, he came, he came for the bubble tea upstairs, bro. And you ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. It would have been different if we had known what this monumental thing that John Wick did for him <laughs> that would justify him sacrificing the Maybe. Maybe in a prequel. Maybe, maybe, maybe in a prequel movie. <laughs> oh, they're talking about doing a prequel five, so I'll play. Oh, God. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, so, um, <laughs> so obviously at the end of the duel, John Wick dies so i guess he quote unquote got his freedom in death because he succumbed to the final shot um that uh donnie yen delivered so yeah if he wasn't on it i'm not sure if that was part of the plan or maybe he can't see <laughs> as well as before but uh, because he killed john wick so um yeah so i think this was meant to be an end to the john wick franchise but it seems like they are toying with the fact that they're gonna do more john wicks well and, uh, is it gonna be with john 
Yes, he's in the next movie. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a prequel. I don't think it's been confirmed because there was a John Wick 5 initially, but there was an article recently where Keanu and yeah. Chad both said that they might give it a break. Well, well I said saw... break rather than end, so I don't know when there will be a 5 or if there will be a 5, but it's kind of up in the air at the moment. Yeah, because he's almost 60. <laughs> like. I... Yeah. So is he actually dead? Is, is, is he actually dead at the end of this film? Yeah. Because I, 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 well, basically, I if they decide not to make one, then he is. But if they yeah. don't decide to make one, then he's not. I, so yeah. I, we don't know. I think it was. I think it was quite well done how they ended it because it, they they left it open. Obviously, yeah. depending on what they want to do. From a viewer perspective, uh, it was quite ambiguous as well. Like the words that um, the hotel manager and. Um, Morpheus had at the end, um, where was, uh, but yeah, it was quite, uh, it wasn't clear as to whether he was actually dead or not, they were like, oh. and um, the guy was like, I don't know, so it left it quite open, even in the dialogue they used, which I thought, it's yeah. good, I don't like it when they leave things to the viewer, to decide what happens and not spoon feed you, I actually prefer it to them confirming that, like, just kill him off in it, he's a come to his wounds, he's a come to his wounds, what, his wounds, <laughs> many wounds in quite, all four films, bro. Like finally, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh. Imagine at the end he just dies of diabetes or something. <laughs> 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 that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. Find out, man's got cancer. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think I'm glad they decided to. Think about, uh, the 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 antagonist of the film. Um, yeah, Skarsgård. yeah, I was gonna build yeah. Bill Skarsgård. I mean, yeah. throughout the film, I think he pulled it off quite well. And like, even that scene where he stabs the um, knife into the tracker's hand stuff, I was like, okay, this guy's pretty cool and stuff. But then it just all went literally in the third act of the film, where he just suddenly turned into a bit of a. He starts freaking out a bit, bro. How it really? Yeah, I do. I think all the sounds, but apparently you can't. Yeah, well, I do. I do quite like. I think throughout the film, you were. Assume- because he's like the top guy that he can't hold his own in anything. You make that assumption. But I do yeah. quite like the fact that they still made him appear as a powerful character despite not having him actually physically do anything for the film. He just came across as just a threatening arsehole, basically, who was pushing his way around. I thought, I thought he was, his acting was uh, quite quite well done. He was, uh, acting was he, good, yeah. he was quite hateable, like in the movie, and just doing things for the sake of being a dick. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah. I found his uh, yeah, accent wasn't know, really uh, believable, though. I don't, I don't, I don't find his accent wasn't believable. believable. His French accent. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was a bit sloppy. Oh, his accent, his accent. You didn't find his accent believable? Nah. Yeah. Actually, was a bit wack. Yeah. Yeah, that's apart from that, I thought he'd done a, a fine job, I guess. Yeah, it was long. Yeah, um, and yeah, I think everything he did was consistent with his character in terms of like doing anything he wanted basically to try and kill John Wick. I thought it was weird that, that throughout these movies, these rules that the Thai table have seem to be like, like, very serious. Yet when the challenge occurred and they were preparing for the duel, they, he was still allowed to keep the contract open on his life. That was ridiculous. That was a, that was a bit fucked. I was like, yeah. all these rules. I was like, you would, like, you would, you you would assume, yeah, you, you would assume that if there's a duel, both parties are meant to be protected, but apparently yeah. not. Yeah, because uh, I wouldn't mind if he had done it like through some back thing, but he, yeah, yeah, he made it. He made it. Made it. He made it sound like that. He made it sound like he was being sly when he said, oh, I'm feeling Mr. Wick won't make it. It's like, bro, if the contract's still open, why are you being like, oh, if you're worried, just say, can you kill him before he gets there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I thought that was a bit, yeah. But, um... Even, even as well, like, on the, um, the, lady on, the lady on the radio, I think, was supposed to have been very cryptic with how she was... T- Obviously, feeding people information, but after a while, it just sounded like she was just reporting on trying to hit someone. Like, <laughs> and, why, and, why was she, and why was she speaking English? Yeah, it's like, surely she can be speaking Spanish and speaking English. You're not talking again, you're nitpicking. Lawrence wanted Lawrence wanted to speak French or something else, bro. I think it would have sounded better as well. I think it would have sounded better as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, obviously, American rules, innit, so? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is, it is an international spider, uh, you know, Hitman Network, innit, so... Posted there. Yeah, but she's speaking a thing with a radio channel in France. Mm. Yeah. So, so, she wasn't speaking to the world. So, she's speaking to people in Paris. Uh, in, in the end, who actually claimed the bounty? Who actually claimed the bounty on John Wick? No one. 
Let them talk about you in the end. Oh, what a loss. What a shame. To be fair, Tony should have got the money. Tony should have got the money in the end. I think Trap should have got the money. should have been at 3 0, bro. Yeah. Alright, cool, man. One one thing that they just left, they left open. Left alone. I think I think we I think we pretty much covered everything. Is there anything else that we missed out? Yeah, you guys went on the credit scene. Yeah. I, watched it, I watched it at home on YouTube because I didn't realise there was yeah. no So, uh, <laughs> yeah, even if Tony Yen did get the money, I guess it wouldn't really... I, I said again, who knows what actually happened after that. I don't know what that scene was supposed to mean. Like, I thought, I I thought it, it was meant to be ambiguous, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought the scene was hinting at some kind of spin-off. I thought it was hinting at a spin-off. That's what I was hoping. I would love a spin-off with just Donnie Yen or even Rina Sao, if you call it. Yeah, probably well, with Donnie Yen and, and, and her, I would imagine. Yeah. That. Haven't, haven't they announced uh, Ballerina, which is supposed to be the spin-off? Um... Ballerina's with, um, what's her name? Anna Diarmas in it or something? Yeah, Anna Diarmas. Yeah, even though she wasn't, she was really wasn't set up. Was her. It, yeah, yeah, Anna Diarmas. Um, it's from the same covenant that yeah. uh, where John John Wick was like trained. I mean, yeah. Keanu Reeves is in that movie. Yeah. As John Wick. Uh, is he, he probably in or is it just rumor? Okay, I guess he is in it, yeah. Probably just for a bit, I'm guessing, though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, he's not, yeah. not going to be there for long. He's not the main, main star. Yeah. 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 But we're, with regards to the post credit scene, it's meant to be ambiguous, so, like, what's going to happen here? But I think it's yeah. based on what they showed in the movie, K would have fucked her up. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly yeah. that, yeah. That's the echo location. Like he, he, as soon as she pulled the knife, he that shit and was gonna fuck her up. But the thing yeah. is, they were in. They were, he, they were outside. He already knew. He already knew she was there, bro. Well, you know, <laughs> he knows. He knows where everyone is at every given time. But he was able to determine. He was able. He's Daredevil. He was. He was able to determine um, the what what cards he had drawn, and the cards weren't like um, they weren't like cards made for like a blank person yeah. because because yeah. yeah is it, is it, is it Bayer called? Yeah. They, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they weren't because the club owner was like, nice trick. Like when he, when he told him what he had, he can just do anything, bro. He's not really blind. I think he's trying <laughs> to I think he's trying he's, he's not, he's not actually blind. That's the first thing. We saw his eyes. And this is wearing contacts that make him he's, blind. He's got special, he's got special objects. He's got special objects. He, he said yeah. in the movie, he gave his, his, he gave his eyes up to um, the high table. Bro, he gave them up and he obviously stole them back at some point, bro. Come on. Right? <laughs> Uh, um, one thing I did I did want to give a quick shout out to, uh, which I did quite like in the film, was actually the, the music. I thought the music really added to every action scene and every scene in the film, to be honest. Um, some notable um, ones which I remember was, um, I think, the scene where, he, where John goes to see the hotel manager at um, the concierge's graveyard. I think just before that scene, it switches up to some uh, yeah. really, um, like violin string music, which I thought was quite cool. It changes the pace quite a lot. Um, then there was obviously the kind of uh, playing like, quite retro, and then the scene where they were playing cards downstairs, where you could go upstairs, but all you could hear downstairs is the bass, which kind of just added to the intensity and the suspense in that scene. So I thought I thought the music was quite, uh, it added. I think it added. It actually added to every scene. It wasn't a thing where they could have just turned it off and it would have been the same. I think the music added to every intensity part of the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since Ruben added something you like, let me just add one more thing that I thought was stupid. In the scene with the final scene with the stairs, where he gets to the stairs and, oh, he, like, he, and he feels down. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that. I mean, that was that was stupid. I mean, he was deliberately rolling down yeah, the that stairs. Yeah, that was that was obviously. It was like a Dragon Ball Z when they punch the guy and he goes through like four different mountains and shit. They were literally like he was rolling Bro, down. It was it was clearly intended yeah, to be funny. It was it was intended to be funny. Like, it, it, it was supposed <laughs> to be. Just for it was just, supposed to be dumb. So I don't know. Like, yeah. yeah, it wasn't funny though. It was stupid. Well, my 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 was my 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 no, the, thing, some bits the thing is, Lord, it, it continues. Me. Like he he stops here, yeah, and then he keeps rolling. So it was obviously <laughs> intentional. Like you could just tell by the timing, the timing of it. Well, and it's yeah. In the context of the plot, that is stupid because he only had one minute to get to the location to get his freedom. So Lord, Lord, they need, they needed, they needed, they, 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 they needed an excuse to allow Donnie M 
and the black guy to help him. So it's like, bro, you made it to the top on your own, but now you need to start back from square one with help. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, that was that I would have given the movie a 10 out of 10. Like, how do you, you know when he books got to the stairs and there was like a big guy standing on the stairs and they looked at him? I would have given the movie a 10 out and then straight away, if all of them just looked at him and said, you know what, fuck this, I'm out, no way. He just killed like three of the man, I was gone. If they just ran away, I would have said 10 out of 10, well done, because that's what you should have done. Because yeah. this guy is literally Fully. a wall. He's like, you know uh, what, I don't need 20 million. Stop you know what? You know, bruv, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know how many points you deduct for that for that one decision, bruv. <laughs> how many points are you going to deduct for that one decision? I'm going to know the zero. You know, it took us all 10 points, bruv. But I, yeah, yeah, I've, I don't have too much, too, 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 too much, to, too much to add, to be honest. Um, yeah. In terms of, yeah, we've cool. gone through, we've gone through the characters. Um, the con is the, the guy who acted in the concierge. This is uh, Ruben. Ruben, I can't hear anything you're saying. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the guy, the guy who played the uh, concierge. This was his last film before he passed away. Lance Reddick. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lance Reddick. Yeah. 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 I know. I know. Obviously, there was no way they could predict his uh, his um, death, but it did feel a bit distasteful. Yeah. Obviously, having recently. I thought so as well. Yeah. I thought so as well. Uh, Obviously, it was too late for them to do yeah, anything to change the movie. Yeah, but exactly. it kind of did. Yeah, because yeah. it happened days before it came out. Yeah, they yeah. didn't know he was going to die when they filmed yeah. it. So, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. yeah, I think if it, if, if it would have happened long enough ago, they probably would have added a scene in, like a like a scene of mourning for the character. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that he just got popped and it was that was the end of it, it did think... feel. I'm not sure this tasteful is the right word because they couldn't have done anything, yeah. but it did just make me feel yeah, a bit uneasy. I don't, it made, it I, made I, me feel uneasy. I think it'd be unfair to criticise it. Be, I, I be to criticise it because it was literally like the film had gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's literally nothing. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't do this thing. I, would, I wouldn't criticise it. I'll just, I'll just say it, it. It made me feel uneasy for the fact that obviously knowing he had passed away that he just mm. popped and that was it. Um, <laughs> and also in, yeah, the, yeah. in, in the defence of the movie. <laughs> In defense of the movie, yeah, I, I, think yeah, they, yeah. I think they did put a disclaimer um, saying RIP Lance Riddick. Uh, in, in the credits. In the yeah, credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they did obviously, uh, you know, add respect where it was due. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, we went, I think we went through all the characters. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much covered everything. I think you guys want to get the scores or any, any last yeah. wrap up? points you uh, want to make yeah i think i've made um, my yeah points. i think i'm ready i'm ready i'm i'm gonna go first because i think this is gonna be on a downward trajectory um yeah but yeah um so i i thought <laughs> i thought i thought the movie was everything it needed to be in terms of what they wanted it to be i felt like they knew what the assignment to to accomplish and it was everything that they to be Noted all your points about, you know, how in incoherent the story was and all the little issues and part very easily. Um, but I think it was kind of purpose. The movie was purposely made to just not take into account all that shit and just be a straight up action movie. Um, so, yeah, I really loved um, the choreography. Um, I thought it was quite in it was very entertaining to watch. And it was the choreography itself between the one to one fights, I think was believable. If you ignore with all the background characters kind of just dangling and waving in the background. So it was quite believable, flashy. Um, Donnie Yen obviously added like another, see the sword. And um, you had the Japanese guy as well. You got to see him do some, like flashy things and he had the fight with Donnie Yen. So I thought the choreography, and the shootouts as well. Everything chore chore choreography wise was just entertaining for an action movie. So that was like, yeah. I, I loved it up, like, fully. I was entertained. Um, the music added a lot to it for me as well. The music inspired every single scene. And the uh, the action shots and the camera angles as well, especially with that scene we spoke about in the house with the overhead view. I thought all of it was just done beautifully for an action movie. And by the end of it, I just felt like I was fulfilled. I didn't feel like I needed to think about how they could improve it. To be honest, at the end of the film, I, um, I was like, yeah, I'm fulfilled satisfied with everything this movie has been and I knew what I paid for. I didn't expect to come in the, you know, some deep story that I had to keep track of. Um, or any story. Or any story. It's really any story. But yeah. Um, however, having sat through this review with you guys, 
Um, I will lower my score <laughs> just because obviously some of the things we discussed. Um, so I will drop my score from a ten, and this is this is after obviously reconciling everything. So after I saw it, it was a straight ten. I'll drop it from a ten to a nine, and that's 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 literally only because some of the things which could have been done better, which would have made the movie, could have improved the movie. Things of the story, things they could have added to the choreography to make it a bit more believable. Maybe some of the things with bulletproof clothing. I would have loved if they just made John Wick's character in general not such a plot-armoured character, at least show that he could be. Like you said, they've done it in the other movie. But personally, I like it. I like seeing a character who takes on wounds, who gets damaged, who is at risk of losing his life rather than just kind of walking through the whole movie untouched and unfazed although he did that in the end so, you know but yeah, yeah. that's I, me nine, can, nine out of ten can, can i just say Ruben, I, i'm really shocked at your score because like <laughs> i feel like this whole review like you you guys have just been complaining about this film <laughs> No, hey, listen. No, 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 I have, I've, po- I've pointed out a few things in the film. Yeah. But again, th- those things, what, with, with law, it sounds like those things are law out of the experience. Whereas mm-hmm. for me, I was, a, I was completely immersed in the film. Yeah. And that's why I think, I think the fact that the movie was so fast paced, and yes, you said every scene was an excuse to go from one scene to the next with pace. I was riding the train. I didn't stop at any point to think, oh, well, you know, how did they get from A to B? Um, so by the end of the movie, I just felt the end up a wild, a wild rush, yeah. which is why my score is so, so high. But I've deducted one point just because there are some subtleties they could have done to make it, give it that extra little bit of push to be a 10. They didn't have to make it perfect, but a few things they could have thrown in um, to just push it over the edge. Mm-hmm. Having, having lists, you know, spoken to you guys. And I'm, not being gen- I, I'm not being generous. I love the hell out of that film. Like I, I left the cinema feeling satisfied. All right, can I, can so, I, just, can, yeah. yeah, can I just go? Because I just wanted to like, get my, <laughs> get my over, over. So, um, yeah, like I, I haven't really interjected this whole review because, like, I, obviously, I, I get that it's like cathartic to kind of like get, let off some steam, you know? Because obviously, if, if you there's things you didn't like about the film, this is why we do this because we obviously want to talk about it, want to get it off our chest. Um, like, and like saying that coming into the movie like the first i say half an hour an hour like you know that the, the things we went through the acting the plot i was just like what is this like i was ready to walk out the screen because i was oh, like no. this like this this is just terrible like this is this is like bad this is like a straight to dvd uh b movie uh level acting in it so like, the, like it felt it felt like there was no chemistry between the actors but then um <laughs> And, and I feel I feel like this is the main uh, weakness of the, of the movie because it takes so long to get to the first fight scene. Um, but when it did get to it, when it when it did get the ball rolling and it was everything was kicking off, you know, the shootouts, the the, the, the martial arts and whatnot, I was like, whoa, this is amazing! Like I, I was just fully integrated into the movie, as you said, I was immersed the whole way through. Um, I'll be honest. The uh, the story felt like um, you know when you're playing the game, and it's like you have the the the, the cutscenes that you want to skip. I was like, let's get to the next let's get to the next fight scene. Man. Let's get to the next fight scene. But I feel like um, you can judge you can even judge this movie on obviously the narrative uh, uh, downfalls, or you can look at you can look at the the strengths of the movie, which is all the the blood, uh, sweat, and tears they put into the the, the action scenes and like the choreography and the camera work we, we obviously we touched on all those things but i really do think like out of all of the john wick movies this film it excels in that in that department um and like you know especially like i i have a lot of respect for keanu reeves because you could just tell like he's a shit actor but he's he's such a good performer like you could tell he's put in so much work and effort and that's why i i walked out of this movie like just loving it i had an absolute blast um just the whole well from from i'd say the, the sort of midway point to the end yeah there was some that yeah there were some like um silly t- silly moments and like the film could have been shorter and like some of the characters were were a bit silly but yeah i think overall it's like for me it's like if you're gonna go on a roller coaster you're not you're not going on a you know you've, you've got those rides where they have a little bit of like story plot like the guardians of the galaxy ride for example and it's like judging the ride oh that that story was terrible uh like you know what you're you know what you're 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 paying for as you said ruben like I, I i felt like i had a fun ride it was a very entertaining experience and i feel like that was the, the most satisfying 
uh, part of the film for me. Um, and maybe it's because like the past couple movies I've seen have been a real letdown, uh, namely Marvel movies and you know other other mm. films. Yeah, but I feel like this has been the highlight. Um, and like I, again, you can you can judge this movie in two parts. But I I choose I think I choose to kind of see the upsides, which are like the, the stuff that really kept me like was really thrilling, um, and just got my my heart racing and my adrenaline pumping. So uh, I, yeah, I get my I got my money's worth. So I think I'll give it a nine. I think I'll go. Yeah. yeah. I think the only thing the only thing I would say is that difference with me is that I don't feel like I'm the good stuff. I I don't think anything else um, was so boosted up that it actually overshone how incoherent the story was and the issues with the characters. I think that there was stuff so pumped up that it made it acceptable to come out of the cinema feeling fulfilled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. Uh, on to the uh, next. I, I'll go next. I want to start off just by saying I did enjoy this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed this movie. However, it had great action scenes. I enjoyed all the action scenes, the fighting, the choreography. You know what I'm trying to say. It was done well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. I also want to say, out of the four John Wick movies there is, I think this is the worst one. Um, you think it's worst can't three? Yeah. So, uh, you can't really just three, have a movie three about pretty bad. plot. <laughs> like, yeah. plot. Like Lawrence was saying, you can't just throw in scenes just to get you from A to B and, and help people really do it. It's just, it doesn't work like that. Um, I, I don't know how to word the word, put the words in my head out of my mouth. It's um, yeah, it was um, let down because again, he, he he ended up in places for no apparent reason. Again, he was in Japan. He was just sitting down drinking tea. His he got his friends, people downstairs getting killed, and he's just like, hmm, he has to wait for them to come up and find me. He has to wait. He has to wait for them to come up and say, you should probably leave now. Yeah. Before he, he does anything, and he's just like, but as, as a pro assassin, you kind of think if your friends people that were getting killed you want to go either help out or leave so they follow you and he didn't do either of those things mm. um again in russia he's like he's hunting down this man why does he run i don't know he he obviously can fight it's just a case of getting john wick in the rain to do his fight in the rain again for moving on board <laughs> it's not like keanu Reeves is someone you want to really want to see topless he didn't get topless which i'm really happy for <laughs> Um, yeah, this movie, it, it, if you're just there for, for action, it's a great movie. You can enjoy all the action scenes because that's what Keanu Connery does well. And this movie does it really well. Every fight scene is done well. Again, with the scene in the house with the top down view, it's like a video game. This is this movie is a video game. It's like, yes. they, all, it's like they all play a game for you. Know what? This would look really good on a big screen, wouldn't it? And that's, that's what yeah. they did. <laughs> but there's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really not enough to say this was a good movie. It's an enjoyable movie. Mm -hmm. It's not a good movie. So that's why, for me, I'd have to give it a four. Okay, yeah. It, it's enjoyable, like, it's, but yeah. that's fair. it's not really a movie. It's, it's a video game with Keanu Reeves in it, really. Yeah, and I guess I guess you're judging the film more... I, I, I guess we're judging the film on, on different... Uh, differently here. So I, I yeah. judge on my experience of the film, whereas you're judging it more on overall, how does it work as a complete movie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it. Cool. Uh, I can go next because I know Lo wants to wrap things up at the, <laughs> as the <laughs> last one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still gonna. So I was always going to be biased having this film because I, obviously I grew up with martial arts. I grew up with Donnie Yen and Jackie Chan and like all the greats and uh, I'm just always into watching stunt uh, performers that like follow them Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So I know how much um, work that takes into making films like these. So from that perspective, I can always appreciate how much um, they did or how much they kind of brought up proper stunt films as a as, as a genre. Because before it was just like either CGI stuff or like, mm. um, you know, stunt doubles, all this kind of stuff. But this is like proper people doing like proper stuff, um, kind of like back what Hong Kong movies were like, where they do things, do shit for real. Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah, yeah. So I could really, I just love that kind of stuff. So just seeing them go back to that and just have so much fun with it, like, I didn't care. I mean, like, obviously, yeah, it would be, it would be good, great if it had a better story and stuff. That or that will always make things better. Um, I'm not going to, like, argue with that. But 
it didn't take that like you know it didn't take the experience away from me because i had an absolute blast just seeing just how much work Keanu put into all his fight moves like all the stuff he could do even at his age was insane um a lot of those shots and camera angles were beautiful um like who else was there Donnie of course Scott Scott Adkins like they <laughs> they I, I, as um, Pete was saying like action movie wise they just kept outdoing themselves because this was the most action-packed um film they've done so far and i think that's what they wanted to do, to do really i don't think they wanted to focus too much on a coherent story i think they just wanted to just just go all out on action just go crazy and just have fun with it and i can't really fault them for that if they just want to have fun and make a movie sometimes it's just like just friends doing stuff it's just keanu and chad just was like okay let's just let's just fuck around let's do something crazy and so um yeah, I mean, for what they want to do, I think they accomplished it very, very well. Um, I had a blast. We already dealt with all the advantage, uh, all the stuff we loved about the movie, like, you know, the shots with the bird's eye view, that whole sequence was incredible. It was like a video game, as Cam said. Um, and a lot of the stuff I like about the film is also um, the way it's shot, obviously, as in lighting wise, the way they put lighting in this film is absolutely beautiful. It's always something they've been very strong with. Um, it's something that a lot of other movies have now started to start to copy because it kind of started with John Wick One, where they did the whole like um, very colourful blues and like neon kind of kind of feels mm -hmm. to it, and then adding their own vibe to it. And then now this other movies were like, oh yeah, let's get on this. And then now we kind of saw like a trail of other movies kind of copying it. But John Wick has really done the best, which is something you wouldn't expect from like stunt guys like to really focus on. They, they, you think they'll just focus on action stuff, but to actually focus on the beauty of what we're seeing on the screen is always a lovely, lovely touch. I can appreciate as like a, you know, mm. as a creative, I guess. Um, so yeah, I guess without rambling on too much, yeah, you can tell I really, really had a blast in the film, really loved it. But there's obviously bits that, it's not gonna be the perfect film, I'm not gonna be like, you know, clouded by that. Um, so yeah, it'll be the same as you guys with the nine out of 10 for me. Nine out of ten for this one. Okay. I'll just that's awesome, man. I'll just I'll just add this. This movie did uh, has the biggest budget of all the John movies. I think the budget is like twice the budget of the third one, or okay. all, all, almost twice the budget. Um. So yeah. Hundred million. Hundred million. <laughs> yeah, and I think three was like seventy-five mil, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. But yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Making a lot of money as well. Okay. I've seen Lord's just been there, just, just, like, just, just charging up, bro. Just charging up. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought, yeah, I, thought yeah. I thought I had to put my bulletproof suit on, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we can, we can change it. I think, I think everyone's <laughs> review is quite telling. I mean, if you ignore all of the bad things about the movie, yeah, you can give it a great score. But like no one actually demoted any of the, the bad stuff that happened. We're just saying that that's not what we were here for. Um, for me, I reject the notion that because it's an action movie, we, they don't have to make any sort of effort yeah. in delivering a coherent plot. I feel like that's part of their job. They have the budget to do it. They're writers. Also, I agree with Subi. It looks like Keanu Reeves done so much hard work. I know I've seen the YouTube videos of all the shooting and all that. It's all, always really impressive. But for me, that has nothing to do with whether the movie's good or not. How hard he worked is irrelevant to me. If he didn't work hard and the movie was great, then the movie's great. If he worked his ass off and the movie stank, then the movie stank. I think him working hard has no bearing on how I would review a movie. Um, uh, as everyone mentioned, that there's a lot of incoherent stuff with the plot and all that. And I think the plot is very similar to like a Fast and Furious movie to be honest with you in terms of the later fast and furious um, the amount yeah. of stupidity that's in it and i feel like this movie gets it's getting a pass because it has some of our favorite actors in it and it's got a lot of great action scenes in it and even some of the action scenes i felt because it was so and trying so hard to be bigger and better than all the other john wicks i think sometimes it went too far and into the realm of ridiculous and obviously for you guys it didn't pull you out of the movie but for me it made it comedic when they weren't trying to be coming. I was laughing at the movie, not with the movie mm. at certain points, similar to what I do with the Fast and Furious movies. Like, I laughed at the absurdity of it, I'm, but that's absurdity. And they're probably, and Fast and Furious are leading into it now. But um, this movie, I think, was still trying to take itself fairly seriously because of how much work they put into the action. I'll say the stuff I did like that you guys all liked as well. The, the over-the-top shot of the, with the dragon breath gun, that was fantastic. Some of Keanu Reeves' stunts were amazing. Um, 
And I thought Don Yen's all of his core choreography all up. I mean, Don Yen, Don Yen. I mean, I don't even have to say how great he is. He is always great on screen. <laughs> I love Hiroki Sanada. Um, I hate that he's always killed off. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I expected I knew it was going to happen. Um, but yeah, I just... Um, while there were some good things in this movie, I, I, I think that even though you came here mainly for the action, I still think that this movie's bare minimum is to provide a coherent plot. All of the other John Wicks had a coherent plot. I don't remember it having been this ridiculous and this deep. I don't remember coming out. There were basic plots. They weren't amazing. They weren't deep. They weren't insightful. And giving John Wick that much of a pass anyway, like you don't have to do any sort of amazing plot. You just have to be coherent, I think is a very low bar that they should meet especially with a budget of 100 million. So um, while I do appreciate they focus on the action, I think they, the writers could have done a better uh, job of weaving those action scenes together rather than just saying, oh, they only have the action and then the audience won't care anyway, uh, which seems to be the case because obviously this being reviewed greatly. Um, and if this was a Marvel movie, I think we would be a lot harder on it for the exact same stupid that like, we, we, we yeah. hammered at for this mm. coherent plot and all that. So I don't know why we should give this one a pass just because it's got better action scenes. Um, I think I tried to be consistent where I can, and I'm still not being consistent because I'm probably going to rate this higher than I think it should mm. be. Just because I love the character, because I love the actors and the action scenes I did actually love. So with that being said, I would probably overall give this a five out of ten, and I think I'm being generous. <laughs> I think you. I think you've been generous too, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised by that. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I put a lot of fucking story uh, and characters, but I do love the John Wick franchise and the action. Mm. Um, I can't believe you scored ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm not as bad as you. I guess. Like I said, I'm being generous. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely, yeah. I definitely feel like um. No, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. We, we all have large movies on. I think for me, if this movie, if this movie was uh. And again, the comparison to Marvel, I think with Marvel, there is more of it because there's been such a trail of movie movies in, Mar in, in Marvel and they all have almost like a conjoined story, which, is, which has led up to one giant climax that there is more expectation on every uh, sequel ne or next movie to be as good as or outdo the previous in terms of story and make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like in, I feel like in John Wick, even though the other movie did have, like you said, they did have more coherent stories. It's never been the focus. I think that's why it gets kind of a pass with me, if you want to call it a pass. Um, but yeah, I think if this movie was flipped on its head and they focused more on the story, but they made the choreography and fight scenes and flashiness, if they reduced all of that stuff and brought it down and underdone it so that stuff wasn't as good as it was and was actually, you know, quite shit, I think I would have probably scored the movie ridiculously lower. Um, I think the fact that the stuff which was amazing to see on screen was heavily weighted and skewed more than the story. That's why I could give it such a high score. Um, but overall, a good movie should have balance. Yes, yeah. I would agree to that. A good movie yeah. should have balance in both areas. I, I think the first two John Wick movies were the better, better, better by far. Yeah, mm. the, the, the story just felt more tight with the, the first two. And like, I do, to be fair, like I do agree with you guys, um, with you, especially Law, in terms of like the story, because yeah, the, the, the story is not just like, oh, okay, I can kind of give it a part. Like the story is bad. Like, it's, it's it's just you know you can ignore it you you you, you can you, you can flat out yeah. just ignore i i didn't think about i didn't think about the story for the Dominic movie throughout the film once i had in my head right he's trying to fight for his freedom that was it i never had to think about the story like, it's very I think, um, I think the worst thing about it is it's very transparent like it's it's not even like they're, they're not they're not talented writers they're just not mm. trying it's just lazy writing and, and like that's, they're, they're at they're yeah. at a point in the franchise where they have a following, they have an audience that are going to see it no matter what. So they don't need to put effort into that. that, that um... It is literally the next Fast and Furious series. Yeah, exactly. Usually, so just... usually you, you would have expected, even like the one kind of scene which could be one of two or three scenes which could be construed as emotional, emotionally filled in the film, the scene where he saves the dog. Even that scene, although we know why he'd done it, that scene didn't really conjure up any emotion for the viewer it was just more stuff than they put into the plot and the character but you didn't really get a sense of oh this is a very this, this is meant to show like the depth of john wick's character that like, he's made this specific decision in this point of time um so yeah just again another thing to show you clearly it was any of their focus to go into any kind of depth of the story even when they were doing they were dealing with themes which were story specific and important um yeah 
Yeah. I agree.